Okay, hello you welcome to my channel. Now in this video we want to find c minus a minus b given that the integral of 1 over sine of x minus the cosine of x plus the square root of 2 dx is an arbitrary constant minus this term right here. So this question is from the JE main um, indefinite math questions, indefinite integral math question, alright? So when we are given um, a question like this, where this a, b, and c are unknown, okay, we first of all have to find what a, b, and c are, then we will now compute this, and the result is, this is what we are being asked to find anyway. Okay, so let's see what we have. Okay, so given that, well, we can start by integrating this function, and then we will get a result, which is the integral, the, the integral, and then we will now compare the integral with this given integral right here, where this a, b, and c are unknowns. So, if our result is the integral of this function and it has this form, then we would therefore pick a, b, and c from that. But, in some cases, uh, it would be a lot more easier if we just differentiate this given integral, where the derivative of this integral will give us this integrand. And in the process of getting back to that integrand, we will know what a, b, c are. So, let me just put it down here that the derivative of that given integral so let's see what the derivative is all right to know if we can just use that method and we get get done with it right so if we differentiate the arbitrary constant we just have zero minus the constant multiple so let me just put it out here one over the square root of a right okay then we go ahead to take the derivative of the cotangent function of an angle when we differentiate the cotangent of an angle, you have negative cosecant squared of that same angle. So we have negative cosecant squared. Since this is negative already, we will turn it to positive. Cosecant squared of that same angle, right? And when we are done with that, we look inside the argument to see if we have a function of x different from the identity function. So as you can see, this right here is just x over b where the derivative of that will just be 1 over b. So we are going to multiply this by the derivative of the inside function. That's what we call the chain rule. Okay, great. Now, let's see what we have. We have the derivative to be 1 over b times the square root of a times the cosecant squared of x over b plus pi over c, where cosecant is, in fact, 1 over sine squared. 1 over sine. In other words, cosecant squared will be 1 over sine squared of that same angle. But here, what we have here is quite different from what we have as a derivative. What does that mean? Does it mean that this and that are in fact different? Well, looking, I mean, apparently speaking, like as it appears, they are very different. But if we want to apply some trigonometric identities on this, we can somehow get to this form. It's just that we need to choose the right path to follow. And it's it could be a little bit tricky or even very tricky, right, getting here. So in fact, I would leave this to you, get the derivative from this form back to that way we have it in the integral. Get the derivative from this form to the integrand and then compare when in the process you can get your a, b, and c. But I'm not going to do that. I'm going to, in fact, integrate this function directly, right? And when I integrate it, hopefully we will get the result and then we can get a, b, and c from that. So let's see what we have. Okay, so here we have to find the integral of dx over the sine of x minus the cosine of x plus the square root of 2. So the first thing I'd like to do here is to factor out the square root of 2 from the denominator. Even when it is not common, we can still factor it out, right? So by factoring it out, I mean we are going to put it out here as uh, 1 over the square root of 2 out of the denominator. So in fact, let's rewrite the integrand again and see what we have. So as you can see, the denominator will become where well, the square root of 2 wasn't there. So taking it out means we are going to divide this by that square root of 2. That is 1 over the square root of 2 times sine of x. All right? And again, we had just cosine of x right there. That means we are going to replace this with 1 over the square root of 2 times the cosine of x. And this last term had the square root of 2, which we've taken out of the denominator, or we factored it out. That means we're going to be left with 1 right there. In fact, let me rewrite this at the middle. Anyway, it doesn't really mean anything. Okay, so this is what we have. Uh, let me continue over here. Well, we have 1 over the square root of 2. We have the integral of... Well, you notice that we have 1 over the square root of 2 multiplied 
by, uh, with co sine of x and then we have uh, 1 over the square root of 2 multiplied um, by the cosine of x. I'm going to rewrite this denominator as one the, d, the dx over, let me put it here, right, dx over, what you notice, this right here can be rewritten as sine of pi over 4 times the sine of x. I put it down here as minus cosine of pi over 4, right, times the cosine of x. Oh. Let me let me write it properly so that everything will be contained in there. So as you can see what we have there, we notice that 1 over the square root of 2 is exactly equal to sine of pi over 4. Same thing with the cosine of pi over 4. That means in place of 1 over the square root of 2 appearing inside the integral sign, we can re replace the, that with what sine of pi over 4 and cosine of pi over 4. And I'm writing in this in a way that will help me to rewrite the denominator in terms of cosine of sum of two angles. Great. So you notice that when we have cosine of the sum of two angles, it is always cosine of the first angle times cosine of the second angle minus sine of the first angle times sine of the second angle. And that looks exactly like what we have here, except that this is uh, multiplied by negative one. So let's see how we are going to use that. This is going to be, well, we put the dx at the top divided by, well, I'm going to rewrite this as, uh, you notice this has been multiplied by negative 1, negative of cosine of the sum of those two, ang two angles, which we can write as x plus pi over 4. And then we add 1 to that. So from here, if you expand this right here, you are going to get exactly this. All right. Very nice, isn't it? So let's put this down as 1 over the square root of 2 times the integral of Maybe if you like, you can put the 1 here to be 1 minus cosine of that, right? Keep in mind that this right here is the same thing as, uh, let me just put 1 minus cosine of, well, I'm going to factor 2 out of the argument of cosine. So let's put the 2 out here. And by put, taking a 2 out, that means we're going to be having, well, x over 2 inside of that plus pi over 2 times 4 is just 8. So what I've done there is to factor out cosine of, to factor 2 out of the um, argument of cosine function, right? And why am I doing that? Well, let's notice something. When we have 1 minus cosine of 2 times some angle, okay, maybe let me put it down here with uh, red, 2 times some angle, this in fact is the same thing as 2 times sine squared of that angle without the 2, right? Or maybe the 2 is here, but it's not 2 times the angle anymore. Well, we have 1 minus cosine of double angles, double angles, all right? This is equal to 2 times sine squared of that angle without the double, right? That means this is going to be uh, 1 over the square root of 2, right? Then the integral of, well, let's put the dx at the top divided by 1 minus cosine of 2 times some angle will be 2 times, maybe let me put everything here in red, 2 times sine squared of that angle where the angle here is x over 2 plus pi over 8. Remember, you don't use the 2, right? That will be x over 2 plus pi over 8. Isn't that very nice? So, as you can see from here, all right, uh, let me clean, let me clean from the top, all right, to the second to the last line, so that we can continue from the top. Okay, very nice. So this is where we stopped, all right? Now, this is going to be, you notice that we can put the two at the denominator out front, the constant multiple that we're going to have, 1 over 2 times the square root of 2, right? We're going to take the integral of, well, you notice that sine of an angle is, in fact, 1 over cosecant squared of that same angle. So now we have 1 over sine squared. This is going to be cosecant squared of that angle, which is x over 2 plus pi over 8. And then we can put the dx in front like this, right? So this is 1 over sine squared, which is, in fact, cosecant squared. Okay. And then we still maintain the same angle, right? Poof. 
This, in fact, is very easy. If you like, you can go ahead and do a USOP. You can call this U, right? And when you differentiate that, that means we're going to have du to be, um, let's say, one half of dx. Okay? That means this is going to be, well, let's just put one over two times the square root of two here. Um, now, when you take the antiderivative of cosecant squared of some angle, we are going to have negative cotangent squared of that same angle. The reason is the derivative of cotangent of an angle is negative cosecant squared. So that means that the antiderivative of cosecant squared will be negative cotangent squared of this angle, which is x over 2 plus pi over 8. What we do is to multiply this by the inverse, right, of the derivative of this. In other words, we are to divide this by the um, derivative of the inside function, which we make u. So on dividing that, we're going to have 2 at the top, right? So you just do a u sub and check that out. That means this is going to be um, 1 over the square root of 2, right? Where 2 and 2 will cancel, where we can put the negative out here, times the cotangent of x over 2 plus pi over 8. And you know that we are doing indefinite um, integral. So in fact, we can add an arbitrary constant either here or maybe just in front. And this is an arbitrary constant. Let me use um, a D for that because we already have C as one of the unknowns, right? So from here, you can see that A is this, right? A is 2, okay? We notice that we have X over B here. B, in fact, is 2. We have plus plus. We have pi over C. Pi over C, this is pi over 8. So C is, in fact, 8. So, you have your three constants, right? So, you can go ahead and evaluate this. There to be 8 minus 2 minus 2. That's easy, isn't it? So, you notice... Uh, I didn't close this anyway. Since this is the... Since this is the uh, integral, right? That is the antiderivative. That tells us that if we differentiate this, okay? we will get something that we can work backwardly till we get the integrand, all right? And that's very nice because the derivative of this is going to be positive cosecant of that, which we can rewrite it as 1 over sine squared of that. And of course, the 2 is here. And you notice sine squared of an angle uh, is going to be um, 1 half of, 1 minus cosine of 2 times of that angle, of which the 1 and the 1 count for that. So, in fact, just go ahead and differentiate that, as I said earlier, and try to work out until you get the integrand. But, in fact, this right here is very nice, isn't it? Okay, um, thanks for watching. Um, like this video, please share this video with your friends. Subscribe to my channel, and I would like to see you in the next video, right? Okay, thanks for watching.